Who Matt Matt, Matt, Matt eating? All right, guys. One, hello. How's everyone? Everyone doing all right? No. No. Terrible. Life sucks. <laughs> this blows. Everybody's starting to get a little, little stir crazy. What do you call it when you're like stuck in the house? I forget. Um, yeah. Cabin fever. Thank you. Thank you. My wife is very smart. Um, so hope everyone is doing well. Hope the uh, little dip into winter weather here is um, me. It felt pretty good actually. I just went running. It was felt really good compared to the 75 and sunny. So, um, so first of all, welcome. Um, Tonight, we'll get started in a second here. Laura's going to do um, some super duper nerdy sciencey stuff, but it'll be entertaining as hell because anything that she presents is usually full of not only wonderful animated conversation, but it's also full of vital information. No, I just make everything up. It's also true. Um, <clears throat> so we'll get started um, and then after she is done, if you guys have any questions or other things you want to share um, outside of uh, outside of that, oh, Chris and Mike are back together again. I like to see that. Um, and <laughs> and uh, if you guys, like I said, if you have any questions or anything you want to share, obviously feel free to do so. Um, if you need to ask anything, you can ask in the chat alongside your screen, and uh, I will get questions to Laura while we are talking if you need it. Um, and then we will also uh, just open it up at the end for thoughts, questions, other, other topics, whatever you might have. So um, we will let Laura get started here. And I know many of you, uh, you know, have said, oh, she just stole my screen. Oh, sure did. No, I need your screen. I need my screen for a second. Um, so many of you probably, um, and, and continuing with my, uh, music information by many of you have, have wondered or, or thought that you knew how I met Laura and all the awesomeness that comes along with it. Um, and while you may, um, while you may see it as we met running, um, the important piece of information here is when I met her and realized what a brilliant young person she was that this. So without further ado. What is happening? You see it? <laughs> Christ. <laughs> you thought I was impressed with her running, but it's really her brain. Laura, I sent that to you the other day, that music video, and you said nothing. I'm disappointed. I didn't see it. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, this is a screenshot of the video from our good friend. Anyone? Thomas Dolby. Thomas Dolby, she blinded me with science. So without further ado, I present to you Nerd Night with Laura Lucan. Wow. Have fun. I like that you call it Nerd Night. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, let's see if I can re-share share my screen now. Yes, yes you can. <clears throat> All right. So we're just going to take a, not a deep dive into science. We're just going to do a kind of a broad overview of some concept with micronutrients and supplementations because I've gotten a lot of questions from um, people who I coach and a lot of just people who I run with. We talk about the differences in different supplements that people are taking and micronutrients and deficiencies in runners. And I think that there's a lot of... Um, not necessarily confusion, but wonder around what's legit and what's not legit. And um, so I'm going to give a brief overview of that, but I'm also going to give you some resources. And this, this PowerPoint is more or less meant to be um, a reference that you guys can all look at after or refer back to after tonight if you are interested. Um, not necessarily for um, to go deep, a deep dive in tonight since we're only going to talk for a half an hour and then kind of just open it up for questions. So when we're talking about supplements or micronutrients, um, we're talking basically about a food or a food component or a nutrient or something that 
someone, that an athlete is going to be purposely ingested to add something to their diet because they're either lacking, they're trying to achieve a specific um, health benefit or performance benefit. And this is, this is the definition um, that we're going to kind of go off of tonight. There are a lot of different definitions, but this, this one seemed to work the best. And so there are a lot of different, wow, so great. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. There are a lot of different reasons why athletes um, will take supplements. Um, there, oftentimes there could be a um, nutrient deficiency, especially if they're, um, someone has dietary restrictions, veganism, vegetarianism um, could be one of them, and that could be detrimental to uh, health performance. It could be to add energy um, convenient, more conveniently while you are exercising. So think about taking your gels and your goos and all of that. That's a form of supplementation. Um, to achieve a specific performance benefit, to gain uh, improvement or reduce things like uh, recovery time or fatigue, um, to increase immunity, um, or also there's this whole concept of like peer pressure, right? And, you know, I think that Rick will laugh because he'll be like, you do this all the time. Other athletes or competitors are using the supplement, right? So um, like Amy Manny and I talk about rocket fuel, which is this, uh, it's more in gel and we like it, but I started using it because I, after, I did a lot of research on it, but originally I saw that a bunch of elite athletes were using it and they were doing well. And I was like, oh, I'm going to try that. So there's also, there's also that aspect of it. But I'm not going to go through this. This is just a slide holder. But there's all my more in gels. Yes. Yes. Thanks, Rick. Um, but really what we should be doing is when we're looking at anything that we're going to be ingesting into our body or trying to supplement with is putting it through some sort of like evidence-based criteria, right? Like, does it actually work? Is there a performance? Is it dangerous? Is it legal? Because there's a legality issue. Um, and so there are some really good sources that I tried to stick up on here. You don't have to necessarily, um, what are you doing? Rick's going, Rick's like going through all the candy right now. Okay. So you, you don't have to take a look at them, but this one is a really, really good one. And if you take um, nothing else out of it, this is where I take a lot of my information on. Th these, these authors publish an article like this about every, I don't know, three or four years. And it's just a bunch of information of like, what is this thing? Like tart cherry supplementation, right? Everyone knows about tart cherry juice. Like, what is it? What does it do? Is it real? Should I do it? Um, and it breaks it down into like really digestible and easy to read stuff. So there's that. Okay. So I'm going to break this down into basically four different sections. Um, micronutrients that are often required for athletes um, because there's the risk of deficiency. Uh, sports food that we use, like practical stuff. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that. I just put it in here for your reference. Um, but that's more like your gels and your goos and all that stuff. And then also supplements that improve performance indirectly and supplements that directly improve sports performance. So did I? Sorry. So... I put these into tables so people can look at them, but we're just going to kind of go through them pretty quickly. That not too, uh, not too in depth. So I picked out basically four that four micronutrients that often um, need supplementation by athletes, and this is going to be iron, calcium, vitamin D, and vitamin B. Um, iron, everybody can become deficient, become anemic. This is going to be more of an issue for women because uh, they menstruate. But you can also get deficiencies with your diet, especially um, if you are a vegetarian or a vegan and you don't eat a lot of meat and you're not kind of focused on different sources of um, iron. Um, access need due to rapid growth, so younger um, individuals, high altitude training, um, 
foot stripe and hemolysis. So this one is actually one that can affect everybody and is, is uh, important. So hemolysis is basically like your red, your red blood cells bursting from foot, foot strikes actually when you're hitting. Um, and if you think about it, the more miles you run, the more times you're going to be foot striking. So the more opportunity for hemolysis and you're just basically bursting all of the iron off of your blood cells. And so that requires supplementation. Um, also, you lose iron when you're sweating and peeing and taking a poop. So that's also another source of that. You like that, Rick? There you go. So this is going to have to be diagnosed by a physician. You shouldn't just start going and taking like tons of iron because that can go uh, south too. So you can go and have a hematocrit or, or your hemoglobin tested and see if you're feeling really tired because that's usually the first, the first form, um, the first symptom that you have Maybe with iron deficiency. Problem. What? Maybe that's my problem. No, that's not your problem. You have a lot of other problems. Calcium um, is another uh, <clears throat> micronutrient that, that runners also have, uh, often have issues with. Um, this could be the result of avoidance of dairy products. So if you don't uh, consume any dairy um, or if there's energy restrictions. So you hear about people trying to make weight for races or dieting um, that can result in calcium deficiencies. And that's really not great because then you have a decrease in mineral density in your bones. And then that can lead to things like stress fractures. Um, again, you can, you, that's going to be probably diagnosed by a physician bone scan. Vitamin D, um, there's moderate evidence for deficiency in athletes basically in the winter or sometime during the season. And so um, basically we're all vitamin D deficient. And vitamin B, um, this can lead to immune disorders. Um, it can result from heavy drinking um, or celiac disease. Again, diet, vegetarianism. So basically, if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, supplementation might be for you or might be necessary. Might be for you. Might be for you. This one I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time with. Um, basically, it's just a whole rundown of different types of sports and energy foods and um, replacement foods for while you are exercising or immediately before or immediately after. It has some nice um, reference like kind of it. <laughs> like gel. Like gel. Yeah. Whoops. Whoops. Um, reference information that you can take a look at um, and use to guide, like if you're wondering, how, like ratios of how much you're supposed to be taking in immediately after, immediately for, or during, um, depending on time. So I just threw that in there for everybody. Okay. So the next one we're going to look at is um, supplementation for an indirect benefit. Um, high training load and racing um, often decreases immune function. And when we have it, high we have a decreased immune function we also we have um issues with we uh, the sorry we see decreased immune function as a result of um needing increased nutri nutritional require requirements as our training goes up um also the need for sleep if we're not sleeping enough and then also there's this issue with uh different steroids right like cortisol or testosterone um Regardless of if you are male or if you are female, as your training increases, you actually see an increase in testosterone. Um, testosterone and cortisol, which is your stress hormone, causes amino deficiencies. Um, you basically are more, uh, more susceptible to getting sick. And um, I actually did a bunch of research on this when I was working on my PhD in our lab, and we would go to Ooh, bars. PhD bite me. So we, we would go to bars and we would find, um, this sounds so awful. We had, we did it. We had criteria and we would find men, um, college age men who <laughs> look like they had high T levels, high testosterone levels. So, um, you look for different features and we would try to recruit them into our studies. And we would see that those individuals um, 
who had higher testosterone during exam times would tend to get more sick than those men who did not have higher testosterone. So, um, because of the immunocompromised. So if you tend to get sick uh, around when you're peaking for all of your races or immediately after, again, it could be the result of um, increases in your cortisol and testosterone, lack of sleep, new, uh, the need for more nutritional requirements, all of these together. Okay, so I color coded these for um, basically on the bullshit scale, meaning green is yes, there is sufficient evidence uh, to support that this micronutrient is beneficial to your training. Yellow is eh, maybe, but maybe we need some more research or there's just not enough research and red is bullshit. So vitamin D um, does increase immunity. Um, it is really great for uh, especially upper respiratory symptoms. Um, and also um, we get 90% of our vitamin D from the sun and um, it gets real cloudy and dark in the winter here. So supplementation is usually good. Um, Probiotics, there's a lot of research coming out on probiotics, which I think is really interesting and pretty promising. Um, this is basically a bunch of live microorganisms that you stick into your face and you do it for a few weeks and it increases good bacteria in your gut. And um, it, it can basically, it, it's been shown to decrease upper ref, respiratory incidences. So uh, URS is upper ref, respiratory. Um, it also can shorten um, upper respiratory colds for by about two days. Um, there's some support for decreasing gastrointestinal distress and in infection. Like you hear a lot of people be like, oh, if you're going on a trip and going on an airplane, you should take a probiotic. Maybe. Um, there's, limited, it, uh, there's limited evidence for that, but that the jury could still be out. So if it works for you, keep doing it. Vitamin C, everybody talks about vitamin C and getting sick. Um, yes, it is uh, going to augment immunity, um, but we just talked about cortisol and, and testosterone. It actually reduces uh, stress responses to exercise, which is kind of neat. So vitamin C doesn't just uh, protect you from getting sick, but it also um, helps with your cortisol rises after uh, really intense exercise. Carbohydrates. So there's been a little bit of talk of carbohydrates actually helping. Um, yes, it maintains blood glucose during exercise, and it actually does uh, also lower stress hormones. But there's not a whole lot of support um, that it will actually decrease those stress hormones by that much. So that's fine. Zinc. I think this one is really interesting because everybody talks about zinc and um, immunity. And it is something that is claimed to reduce the incidence or the duration of colds a lot. Um, and also, um, interestingly enough, there is no support for that, especially with upper respiratory systems. And high doses of zinc can actually decrease immune function, so that should not be done. Glutamine is another one that I know that a lot of people like to take. Um, and while that does have some um, benefits for other aspects of performance, perhaps not so much for immunity. It is um, a non-essential amino acid and it does supply a bunch of energy to the cell, um, but it doesn't like alter anything and there's no really good ev evidence for it. So, oh, it's really touchy. So then, Maybe if we moved on, instead of just looking at indirect, you know, you stay healthy so you continue to train, maybe more direct um, role supplements can, can play. So basically, um, the role of recovery, and I like to call it not breaking. So not getting stress fractures, not getting pulls, um, reducing your recovery time so you're able to bounce back and go hard again, you know, on your long run, on your next workout, etc. But what everybody has to, you know, recognize is that training is work 
plus rest, right? And I think that that's what a lot of people tend to forget, that rest part, because it's so easy to skip over. And so some stuff, there's certain supplementations that you can use to actually um, kind of help that rest along by expediting recovery. So we color coded these again, um, and we'll run through them quickly so there's lots of time for questions. Uh, vitamin D. So vitamin D, if you if you've noticed, it's kind of it's a threat along all of this, right? So it's great for immunity. It also has a really great adaptive response for decreasing stress fractures, um, and it is really well supported by the uh, the evidence. Um, it actually can. Um, decrease if you have a low or, or a, de a deficiency in vitamin D, you are more at risk for getting stress factors. Protein supplementation is also um, helpful for recovery. It, of course, enhances lean muscle mass and um, increases protein sy sy uh, synthesis as you are doing your hard workouts, as perhaps you were doing um, today, earlier today, you make it really sore, you're actually breaking down muscle fibers. And so this helps with synthesizing or building them back up. And protein, uh, different types of protein, especially casein and whey proteins, can actually um, help reduce muscle breakdown. Caffeine, um, so people like to use caffeine when they, uh, in their gels a lot, um, or in the morning before they go and run. I know I do, but that's because I have a four-year-old and a four-month-old. Um, and it, it has a lot of really uh, well-supported benefits for endurance-based performance. Um, and, and not only endurance, but also big, you know, quick bouts of, of, of um, uh, effort. So like sprints and stuff like that. So improved endurance capacity, and uh, it works through endorphins release, neuromuscular function, alertness, um, all sorts of good stuff. Nitrate. So this is this one's kind of interesting. And um, a few years ago, there wasn't as much evidence as there is now for it. Dietary nitrates um, actually help with prolonged exercises, which we are all in the business of, right? Um, high intensity, and then even intermittent and short durations. Um, it can actually improve your ability to uh, prolong time till exhaustion by anywhere from four to 25%, which I understand that that is a large range, but we all, well, not all of us, but many of us think that 4% um, benefit is very, very, yep, exactly. Rick's got it. Uh, beneficial, and we'll pay lots of money for shoes that may or may not give us a 4% edge, right? Um, it also reduces the amount of energy you need for your force production. It increases uh, efficiency in uh, the creation of energy in your body and blood flow to your muscles. So things that are Maybe beneficial, uh, maybe not. So there's a lot of talk about collagen lately. Um, collagen needs to be taken in in uh, conjunction with vitamin C to work. It can help with thickening cartilage, so it decreases in, in joint plane. It may. Um, collagen supplements in general seem to be pretty low risk. So like if that's your you know your jam, go for it. There's doesn't seem to be any you know data against you know, taking collagen and it, it being not good. Um, curcumin and, and tart cherry juice are in the same category. These are uh, all thought to be anti-inflammatories. So they reduce um, the effects of sore muscles uh, after a long workout. Some people take it before, tart cherry juice before workouts. Um, and, uh, it could reduce the delayed onset muscle fatigue that we get. So you run a marathon, you feel, okay ish the next day but then you feel like absolute garbage two days later right everyone knows what i'm talking about so so curcumin and, and tart cherry juice um may may help with that curcumin is um also same thing as turmeric it's, it has the same um has, curcumin is in turmeric so if you uh you like curry you'll find it there what's that yes ish Leucine is uh, in our bullshit category. It's uh, 
hyped up to enhance adaptive response to exercise um, and decrease protein breakdown. Um, there's some really um, thin short-term data available, but nothing, nothing long-term has been has been shown. So I would say call bullshit on that one. Oh, and then for Corky, because she asked about this, because I do. A, a, a little tiny bit about this. So uh, Corky asked about ketones for runners and apparently it is a hot topic. I put some citations down at the bottom there that I, I found. Um, so what are these things? Ketones are basically pockets of energy that your body uh, produces when it metabolizes fats instead of carbohydrates. Um, and it happens when you're not really well fed on a balanced diet, so you have to rely heavily on them. And the question is basically, could it actually provide a benefit to runners if you take them as a supplement? Um, and it's pretty new, so there's a limited amount of evidence to support it. Um, so that's, that would be in our yellow maybe category. But the idea is that it might allow your body um, to become more lean and to be able to use fat better um, and not and not have to go on diets like a really low carbohydrate diet to achieve kurtosis, which is basically what people do. So instead, you can just, you know, shove a bunch of these ketones into your face um, and get the same effect is, is the idea. <laughs> um, so uh, it also might be good for post-run recovery, apparently. Um, it's particularly after um, really long stuff. Uh, it seems to me that the ultra-running community seems to, uh, is, is into these ketones. Um, I haven't heard a whole lot about them. Bottom line, uh, is it worth it? Maybe. Uh, potential payoffs could be pretty good. Uh, better endurance, less glycogen use, and low levels of lactate, right? So you're not, you know, hitting that lactic threshold uh, as soon. Um, but apparently there's also a really huge risk of gastrointestinal problems. So if you want to play around with this, um, maybe during training, not during a race for the first time. That would be my recommendation. Okay. So that is all I have. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and then turn it back over to Rick. Uh-huh. Or people can just ask questions with their voices. I know, I know that I was trying to be kind and thoughtful <laughs> and make sure that I didn't. Uh... All right. So all the questions everybody asked were um, in there um, and have been sent over to Laura. Again, yeah, she's directly right across from me, but let's say so they're in her hands so you guys um, will get some answers as you start through those. Um, I'm going to go backwards on one question, and uh, Emily, I think you just, just asked about the sodium, sodium during hot races. Um, I'll let Laura get into a little more of the detail about that, but you know, personally, um, in, especially in long distance events or you know half marathons, marathons, um, Ironman, that kind of thing, it's very common to see sodium tablets, the sodium tabs, as some people call them, uh, used in races like that. Um, because it, it absolutely replenishes more than what you uh, can put back into your body through you know, say gels or using or other nutrition you're taking during the race. So um, it, it's sort of person dependent, of course. You know, I don't want to call Kelly out again here, but if you are a heavy sweater, I'm a heavy sweater. Um, Kelly is a very light sweater. I'm kidding. Um, and usually sodium uh, can help make a difference because, because of course, it helps with the absorption of uh, hydration. So, so I'll let Laura get into a little more detail about that, but you know, the, the immediate thought is 
you know, again, it depends on the person, but it's usually helpful. And you just got to be careful about not overdoing it uh, because it can cause something called hypotemia as you begin to uh, reverse the trend. So, Laura. Okay, so many questions. So the first one I want to go to because I think it's a really good kickoff is um, from Katie and she said, what are the best ways to get these micronutrients, supplements, food, or both? So I am a huge advocate of eating your micronutrients through food whenever possible. I would say that those four uh, micronutrients that I had up on, and we'll share the slides with everybody, and I'll and I'll put that article in there too. Um, but on that first slide, those four micronutrients: the iron, um, if necessary, uh, calcium, vitamin B12, and um, vitamin D, are probably going to be the ones that you'll end up supplementing orally with. Um, but then a lot of everything else you should be able to get through food sometimes um you know protein um if you're going to do the collagen and vitamin c you'll probably be supplementing with that um but a lot of the the other the other ones you don't necessarily need to to supplement with unless you actually see a, a deficiency or see a need to do so um so that would be my recommendation uh, Damon said, any thoughts on magnesium? Yes. I like magnesium as a supplement. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why that's so Why is that so funny? So I take, I take magnesium as a supplement. Um, and um, so magnesium, um, let's get, this, this, is, this one's for you, Rick. Magnesium binds to the same receptors as potassium and so um it, it helps with it can help similarly with like potassium would but without because you can actually like too much potassium is a bad thing don't take potassium um but you can um, take magnesium to help with muscle cramps um and it can help with relaxing your muscles too so you um if you are experiencing a lot of cramping um, or soreness, you might want to take magnesium. You can also sit in a magnesium bath, right? If you don't want to start popping magnesium pills, that, that'll work too. Um, it can also help if you are having trouble sleeping. It will help because it's relaxing your muscles. It's relaxing all of your muscles. It also will make you poo because it's relaxing all of your muscles. So don't take too much of it. But I love magnesium. Um, oh, God. Sodium during hot races, I've used gel. I wasn't sure if they have enough sodium. So sodium, so there is, um, you, can, you can figure out um, how much, you know, kind of water and sodium you need. If you're a heavy sweater, like Rick was talking about, you might want to um, supplement with um, some, some salt pills or, um, you know, there's, in, you know, different Endurolites or, or endurance performance. Gonna yeah, oh. Rick's going Rick's gonna to get one to show you. I would err on the side of caution with these because I think as Rick was talking about, you can go, you know, you can experience hyponatremia, which is kind of the opposite effect and you don't want to, you don't want to have that happen. So I would try to start slowly taking, you know, kind of one when it's a hot day and seeing how that works. Um, and then you can kind of work your way up and kind of see where that happy medium, you don't want to start taking them on race day and popping like four of them. Um, it will probably end badly for you. Let me see. Bananas are constipating back. You're right. So, uh, hold on. So, uh, Emily and others who are wondering about um, salt tablets, uh, this is one version. Um, it's made by Hammer Nutrition. It's called Duralite. And uh, they are. Um, again, it, it's, it's a salt tab, but it has some other uh, other things in it. I guess I'll say some other supplement light things. Um, but they look kind of like just big pills um, here, whatever. So that's what they look like. Um, and like Laura said, be very careful uh, when using these things. Um, it's not like they're not; they are not inherently dangerous um, unless you overdo it and uh, 
they they again as Laura mentioned, you know, use one, you know, start with one, um, and try things. You know, it's one of the reasons why when we are meeting in person and we provide nutrition on uh, the road, um, we do that because we want people to try different things, things sort of experiment when you're training. Um, the time, time to experiment is obviously not a day of race, um, and, and it's, it's also not necessarily time to experiment when you're doing some, you know, excessive training. Um, so you want to try to kind of try different things here and there in your training, even in some of the short, short runs, um, to see how it feels, see how you react to it. Most people will react either, you know, gastrointestinally um, and or um, it can actually, again, reverse the scenario when people stop sweating and other things. So. Just, just be cautious, cautious when doing anything like this. Um, Jim asked, what's potentially so bad about potassium supplementation? Please explain, expand on that. So potassium is is necessary for uh, cardiac function. So your you know, heart pumping blood to your lungs. You can actually have too much um, potassium and you can overdose on it and it can lead to issues like heart issues. And you, you don't want that. You can't overdose on magnesium. You just get a really bad case of diarrhea. Well, again. He asked what? I feel, I feel like, like it all, all comes, comes back to food. All of it. Every oh my God. Thing. Everybody on this call, all they talk about when they are running in large groups is poo. Everyone shake your head. Yes. Do you guys see? Exactly. <laughs> I don't want to bring up one of heart problems. Which, which I guess is, is just, just soft or ice cream little little emoticon. Somebody, oh, Matt, I'm sure Matt back has it right wherever he is. <laughs> <laughs> I have food and some very sketchy porta potties and bathrooms. Um, and please, nobody actually poo in that chair. Sure. Thank you. Okay, I'm trying to find other. Did you see the ones I sent you? Yeah, I did. Yes, they're good. Uh huh. But I'm trying. It's hard for me to look at those. They're. Uh, I'm trying to look at them on my. Um, probiotics. I said I was too far gone, nobody seemed to care. Huh? I said I was too far gone, nobody seemed to care. Yeah, no one seems to care. Um, probiotics. So, um, I don't necessarily have a recommendation on a probiotic to use. Uh, I use a line that seems to work well for me. I use it because it's a it seems to be a good one, and because they sell it at Costco, that's literally my criteria. Um, but it is, uh, it, it was actually recommended to me by, by my physician, so that one, that was, uh, but yeah, if any of them, I would, I, I like the, the comment on avoiding the excess sugar um, in some of them, but yeah, kefir is a, a, a source of probiotics that would work for you as well. How much training would you have to do to see an increase in testosterone? I'm asking. What's that mean? So I, I don't. I don't know if I can talk to it, uh, speak to it as it relates it relates to PCOS. But as far as an increase, um, you're you're gonna see you're gonna see increases in in testosterone all all the time. Um, it just seems to be. It, you're gonna see more of a surge in um, different types of. Uh, different scenarios. So as you're going up in training, um, especially with men, you'll see a higher surge. You will see it with women um, as well. Uh, you also will see transient rises in testosterone, which is probably why a lot of us get um, tend to do a little bit better. And this is a good just so story, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it anyway, um, when we're running in groups, right? So um, you are running in groups, you get a little competitive, right? You have this transient rise in testosterone. That's, that's what's happening. Um, and if you have a transient rise in testosterone, you get to go a little faster, your muscles uh, recover a little better, and then you do it all over again. And so then there's a little bit of a benefit. So that's part of the reason um, training with somebody else and training with someone who's a little bit faster than you, not, not right now, but when we're not in quarantine, um, can be beneficial. Um, so I'm, I'm bringing this up and this is our uh, doctor's little probiotic but this brand culture L, a lot of people may recognize it fairly common brand um, but uh, pretty you know good quality gets 
relatively good review. So that's a long probiotic option. Um, again, this is the kid version, but they make all versions. Um, and then this is Laura's uh, beautiful adult probiotic, and it makes her feel good, makes her happy. And, and so, just so you know, Rick takes nothing. And this is what you get. It's amazing. Any good info on protein Picture supplements, that. powders for veggie vegan types? Um, so, so protein powder. There is. Oh, what is it called? I'll have to. I will have to find the name of it, and I will be happy to do so. And Rick can post it with the show notes as well um, for vegetarian, so vegan and veggie friendly protein powders. There's actually oh, a really um, good one. Vegan. Huh? Yes, that's what it is. Thank you. Um, so. It, oh. Vega. It's Vega. Uh, Vega. So. <laughs> thanks. Sorry. Sorry. Rick's muted. Um, there are there are different types of uh, protein powders that you can use that can be. Um, beneficial. I would say I like simple, right? Because if you get into a lot of the um, fancy bodybuilder protein powders, you don't, you, you need to pay attention to what's in them. Um, and some of the stuff that's in there is not well tested. It could have different side effects. And um, not that we're all sitting here being drug tested all the time when we're racing, but it actually, um, it, it can include illegal stuff too. So the uh, types of protein powders that I use are um, almost all just like pure whey powder. I use whey protein powder. Um, there's some differences between whey and casein, and whey is going to um, help with lean muscle mass a little bit more than casein. It's, casein is going to be more of a, a fast burn, um, and so that's what I tend to use. That's not going to be helpful for vegetarians or vegans because that's going to be, you know, um, animal based, but that's what I like. BCAAs. Yes. I like BCAAs. Uh, I love Mike said, you want to make sure your protein powders, uh, contain BCAAs. BCAAs are branch chain amino acids. Um, and they are really, uh, important for muscle uh, synthesis. And so when you are building back those muscles after a hard workout, that is, uh, you know, really important and, and really beneficial. And then I think we're looking at Jeff a lot sleeping. Yes. I don't think he's asleep. Oh, yet. he's not sleeping. <laughs> Caroline, is Jeff actually asleep? Or, oh, he's, he's just, just dead. dead. That's a shame. shame. What a shame. So young. Uh, <laughs> yes, flash. Um, and, and guys, if, if for any reason, so if uh, you guys have any questions that weren't answered yet, you can just in. Um, you can do the little click, raise your hand on your uh, screen there, or you're welcome to just chime in. Not a big deal. If we missed a question, or if you just want to yell something. Or if you have something to add, because everybody, like other people, have tons of information that I don't have as well. So. I was always told that caffeine helps burn fat when you run out of carbs. True or cyclist myth? I, I don't know. I haven't heard that one. So I'm going to put that in the maybe pile, but I wouldn't. I'd have to think, <laughs> to think about how that would work. Matt, Matt, um, Matt asked uh, several times, I don't know if you saw it here. I'm thinking him that you have not yet discussed your love for eating crickets. And I said crickets. That's not, not a crickets. nutritional thing. That's a earth. I love the earth sustainability thing. Hold on. Did I talk so about loves the earth so much that she is living in a cricket? <laughs> <Why, laughs> I'm not pound, now. Pound, pound, pound. Anyway, did you talk about collagen water? I just got kicked off. Collagen water. What was, hold on. What was the question about collagen water? Oh, uh, hold on a second. Go on to another question, I'll come back to it. I don't see another question. It was up the top. 
Um, There's a water being sold called, yes, I know this, I, they're called collagen water. Yeah, I've seen it. I think it was, if you can ingest it, it it's beneficial or if only your body can produce it. Some people will take different types of collagen proteins for hair and nails and beauty and stuff like that. Um, it seems there, there seems to be some evidence behind it for for like keratin base so hair nail skin you know benefits um for for from a athletic standpoint or a performance standpoint i i'm not necessarily aware of any specific benefits from um like collagen only unless you're consuming it in in um with different types of vitamin C, but again, that there's limited ev evidence on that. Um, I've tasted that water. It tastes like garbage. Don't drink it. <laughs> mm. Yum. That's what we're going to do next on the food project is we're going to make our own collagen water. Uh, Thoughts on algae. Okay, I do have thoughts on, so. It grows on stuff. It does grow on stuff. So there was, there was a girl when I was in college who used to take um, a bunch of the algae-based uh, supplements. And um, we actually got a whole lecture from a biology professor when we brought it up because it's, the whole idea is like for the benefits is based off of <laughs> the ability to undergo photosynthesis which we cannot because we're not plants so that one's a bullshit that one's a bullshit i like that my favorite thing is watching beth react to science stuff because she's like i love science i like just watching different people's faces and like you can just be like people reacting it's hilarious See, Rick, people like science. <laughs> he just, he's just, he's like, wow, wow, I'm leaving. Oh, your computer's about to run out of battery. All right. And math. Oh, yeah, and math, of course. All right. I always get called out for everything and doing everything wrong. Candyman. Hey, just because I've taken down an entire party size bag of peanut m ms doesn't mean anything. Oh, Before I raise. Those have got, hey, those got protein in them. That's good. And yeah, there's, and milk. Yeah, maybe better than Skittles or nerds that Rick was eating. All right, guys. Any, any other questions? Oh, I see. This was awesome. Um, so if we, did I miss anything that anyone asked? I tried to go through everything and, and take a look. I think we're, I think we're good. I will turn it back over to Rick as soon as he plugs back in. Oh, wait, here's one. Let's 